So my first, what I consider to be love at the ripe old age of 28, 29, as little as we know about what love is at that point, was a woman I met in Sydney, Australia. I was working for a VIP couple as a trainer back in the day. I was sort of sculpting bodies as opposed to liberating souls at that time and minds. And so this was sort of one of those quintessential across the crowded room moments where we eyes locked and it was sort of us, our fate was sealed. And so there was a little bit of complication along the way. She was dating someone. I had some big epiphanies, let it go. She came back, you know, all the things. And then eventually she actually moved to the States with me from, from Australia. And it was beautiful. We dated for about a year and a half or we were together for a year and a half. And then one day she decided she was going to leave me. And so in ways that I equally didn't understand, I had, unbeknownst to myself, been living in my strategy of survival, which we all create as coping mechanisms from past hurt, right? My trauma of loss meant that I became the perfect boyfriend. Now, ironically, I wasn't too far adrift from who I consider myself to be as kind and generous and loving and sweet and not abusive at all. I'm like a bit of a pushover, but I took all of those attributes and kind of amplified them as a means of trying not to lose her, um, which of course, you know, the expression of fear will break its own heart, right? So my fear, which is of loss, got manifest because that's how the energetics of human manifestation works. And so it ended up being very painful, but equally the catalyst for, you know, without sounding too full of myself, sort of my version of an awakening when two months after she left, I realized the matrix of life and particularly my own idiosyncrasies of survival. And so that's how it influenced my life is I tended to be more of a recluse. So to your question about, did I suddenly have tons of friends? I was very friendly and people enjoyed my company, but I think I was quite happy to sort of do my own thing. I enjoyed my own company. And I think perhaps as a survival mechanism, don't get too close to anyone for the fear of you know, that heartbreak again. But this was just so instrumental and pivotal, a real metamorphosis of my journey to see, wow, I had really been living in the narrative of loss and realized I hadn't lost anything. My parents died and that didn't make it any easier, but the story of loss was being perpetuated versus the event of death had actually ended, you know. So I understood psychological time, the way that we manifest our own suffering and all of it. And that then became the precursor to me becoming the mind architect and uh, freeing people's minds. So let's, I just want to rewind the tape just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You, you moved to Los Angeles um, and you start this production or you join this production company with a couple of your mates. That yeah. Doesn't go, that doesn't work out too well. <laughs> and you have a degree in exercise physiology. So you start working at this gym. I was curious, why, why did you choose that particular gym in Malibu? Because LA is full of gyms. Why, why that one? So, you know, without getting too philosophical, one of the things I say is we're not victims of life, we're beneficiaries of it, right? So I would say, why? Because I'm a beneficiary of life. And so why was it that the friends that I moved to visit in LA, having originally met one of them coaching tennis in upstate New York at a summer camp, he moved to LA. He knew he wanted to be involved in film production. So why was it that he lived in an apartment building in Santa Monica that had the manager of all the trainers from that gym in it, right? So that's how it's very much, whether you say it was spiritually curated by myself at a deeper level, or I'm really divine intervention. He one day and I were just shooting hoops or goofing off. And he's like, dude, you're like shredded. You're in great shape. Like, what do you do? And I said, like, well, you know, I studied exercise physiology and human biology. And he's like, dude, I'm the manager of this gym, you know, and I have all these trainers. Like I could probably get you a job if you get certified. So I was like, all right, cool. That was easy. I'll get certified. And um, yeah, so then that's how I got to that gym, which then led to the VIP couple's ex-trainer who decided he wanted to leave because he had kids and it was too hard to be on the road making films all over the place. So he happened to be at that same gym. He went to the general manager, asked her to put forward a couple of trainers for the interview process, and I was blessed to be one of them. So that's how. I just happened to have a, a roommate in the same shitty rent control apartment building that I ended up in. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, 
You can find links to those in the description below.